Hey everybody, my name is Sam and welcome back to Green Acre Homestead where I'm working more on our DIY greenhouse build. Today is a very awesome special day and a very special video because I completely build, design, and showcase our rainwater collection system. This project actually started months ago. After we did our roof on our greenhouse, we knew we wanted to do some stuff inside and I've always had in mind of doing a rainwater collection system thermal mass, barrels full of water in the greenhouse type scenario because of all the multiple benefits of having them, you know, water on hand, collecting rainwater, having thermal mass to regulate temperature in the hot and cool months, all that stuff. So I knew, as with any project, it all starts with your foundation. Now I could have gotten really elaborate and poured concrete and done some really awesome fancy stuff, but as with a lot of this project, I'm kind of winging it. You know, there's a lot of thought process going on, but this is my first time doing a greenhouse of this style, first time doing any of this stuff. So I've been very cautious about locking myself into something that I may regret later. As such, I dug down to bare solid ground, leveled it out and started placing blocks there. These are regular eight by 16 by eight cinder blocks, or I think the other technical term might be like concrete modular unit, CMU or something like that. Basically, concrete block of standard size. I start off with two blocks per hole and I space them apart so that my final rack, shelf, table, whatever, barrel holder arama was wide enough to properly support the barrels. After that, we laid down the plastic, trimmed around the edges, and stapled it down with these plastic landscape spikes. The plastic in the greenhouse is a DeWitt or Sunbelt brand. Either one, I can't remember right off the top of my head, but link below, you know how we roll. And it is extremely durable and lasts for many, many years. It is a woven plastic, so it allows water to flow through it, but blocks any bit of sunlight and vegetation growth, so I don't ever have to mow inside the greenhouse. I brought the blocks up to a height that would raise the barrels as tall as I felt comfortable mounting them in the greenhouse. Now, I didn't stop at the height because I was afraid of it being unstable or just too tall. I stopped there because I wanted to make sure I give myself enough clearance from the bottom of the gutter downspout to the top of the barrel to run some plumage, which is another word for pipes, plumbing, and connect the system together without having any kind of major problems or issues. With my height in place, I then took two 4x4s, leveled off the system, and despite my best intentions, hardest work, and I was pretty sure everything was level and plumb when I started, these center blocks kind of tilt a little bit. So there's my wabi-sabi for the greenhouse. They're still strong, they're still stable. I don't feel like they're gonna fall over. The pillars on the end are good and plumb. So what you gonna do? I'm not gonna rebuild it. So I'll just live with it and try and ignore it as much as I can. I like how the barrels are up here. Everything looks great. But before I start plumbing these together, I wanna go ahead and take them down into the yard and give them one final washout. These are all food grade and they only had saline in them, like medical salt water. But I wanna give them one last wash and good cleaning before I say, yep, they're clean. They're ready to be used for my plants. Something that's gonna make cleaning these out a whole lot easier is for me to go ahead and drill the holes for the uni seals that I'm gonna to use to plumb these together. I'm gonna to put it right in the middle of the barrel, at least eyeball it as close as I can. So I'm gonna go ahead and drill this out and I'm gonna use that as my drain port and everything. And it'll, like I said, make washing these out a lot easier. This is a one and three quarter inch hole saw, which is what you use for a uniseal for a one inch pipe. So here's a little trick. As you see, I did normal towards the clockwise drilling and it gets caught. For plastic, if you put your drill in reverse, it goes a lot smoother and gives a better, cleaner cut. It takes longer, and now I gotta fish that plug out, but it takes longer, but it does give a cleaner cut. Thank you. 
I was able to flush this plug out, the one that I drilled from the bottom. That was really lucky. What it ended up doing was filling the barrel with a good amount of water for a little bit, flipped it over really quick and poured all the water out of this hole and it came out. Thankfully, it's small enough to where it flowed out freely. Here's also a look at how thick this plastic is on this barrel. That's why these things are so strong and durable and that's probably also why it took so long to drill through it backwards. But very cool, very thick barrels. All right, here is a little tip and trick from me. These are the bungs that are in these barrels and they sell special wrenches that fit in here for you to tighten and loosen them. It's a specialty tool. It might not be something the average person really needs to buy, especially after you see what I'm about to show you. I have here a standard pair of lineman's pliers. They are general standard pliers you get from any hardware store. I have discovered that they fit perfectly widthwise and lengthwise to lock in here to allow this to be the bung wrench. So this fits perfectly right in this notch. And you know, it's not a perfect fit, but it fits in the notch here and back here on the back. And as long as you're careful, you're really able to cinch this down super tight. That's not going anywhere. One barrel down, four more to go. All right, I cut me five, six inch long pieces of PVC. These are gonna be the down tubes that go from the barrel to the manifold below that I'm gonna make. To connect these to the barrels, I'm using a product called UniSeal. It is a flexible rubber O-ring that pops into the hole you drill and then the pipe goes through it and it creates a waterproof seal. I first found out about these from my friend Seth over at Landa House. He's a YouTuber that does a lot of ram pumps and really cool off-grid water source projects. So I'll leave a link to Seth's channel down below. If you've never heard of him or you're interested in ram pumps, go check him out. But he's the one that I first saw this in use on his videos and I thought they were awesome. So, I finally, after years, have a project where I get to use them, and I'm excited. I'm as excited as you can be over some rubber grommets. So, installation is easy. You just pop it into your hole, and then you push your pipe through. Now, what I'm going to do to give myself even penetration or depth into the barrel, I'm going to put a mark on my pipes at one inch which is thick enough to go through the uniseal, but not too far that I really waste pipe. So I'm gonna put it in here one inch. Something to note, you can only push through the seal. You can't pull back out. It's kind of how it works. So, point of no return in a sense, unless I fish it out of the barrel in a little bit. This is definitely a tight fit. Something that's definitely good to do it in this position where I can push down and let the ground support the barrel as opposed to crawling underneath this thing and trying to push up. I would definitely just be moving the barrel all around. So there we go. One inch in and <laughs> totally sealed. I'm picking the whole barrel up just by this connection. Awesome. I'm going to do a couple other steps while I have this barrel right here in front of me and readily accessible. I'm gonna go ahead and primer and glue on my PVC fittings for this. Much, much easier to do it up here than wait for it to be underneath the four by fours and everything and really difficult to get to. This end is done. It's a one inch pipe going into a one inch 90 degree elbow. Now I'll put it back up on the rack here and get the other barrels down. They're all going to be the same except the other barrels are going to have a one inch T put in place so that this is the manifold that connects them and then go left and right. But this is the end of the run so I don't really need anything here. The 
The next little connecting piece I'm gonna put together is this. This is a, actually I think it's a furnace drain or a water heater drain, but it's a hose spigot that's really low profile, right angle, and was honestly the most affordable one I could find in the hardware store, even with it being just a quarter turn valve and brass. It was still 12 bucks. These things have gotten expensive. So what I'm gonna do is wrap some Teflon tape around the threads and then thread it into this adapter that I've got. And that goes from half inch MPT thread to one inch slip. So whenever this is all tightened down, then I'm gonna glue it into this T and this will allow me to then take this, put it in line with the metafold, and then still have a hose valve here accessible for me to hook my garden hose to and use here in the greenhouse. There we go. All set, ready to rock and roll as soon as the rest of this gets put together. Speaking of the rest of this, the fun, easy, standing and working vertically part of this project is now done. What I have to do next is get down on the ground, measure my pieces, cut my one inch PVC sections, and glue each barrel to itself. The elbows to the T's, the T's to each other, and then the last T to the elbow at the end. Let's just get it knocked out. Just get it done. Fluid dynamics being what they are, and honestly, I'm gonna regurgitate things that I've Googled and learned over the years. I don't have a degree in fluidology or dynamicology either. You can fill barrels from the bottom. You can use a manifold, or in this case, a pipe, to fill one barrel, and the water will equalize across all the other containers by that pipe on the bottom. You don't have to fill each barrel at the same time. You don't have to worry about splitting the water amongst the top. Gravity and water being what water is and doing what water does takes care of the rest as far as evening itself out. This is really handy so that it allows me to just put my pipes for the gutters into the left and right ends and then just let them fill and happy and do their thing on their own. It reduces a lot of the plumbing that I would need and just is great. So thanks water and physics and gravity and everything else. It's really handy. I appreciate it. I'm up here on the corner right here at the gutter and I'll go ahead and start building a very primitive but still effective first flush diversion system and then start doing the piping to run it from the gutter here and inside to the barrels. I'm using all two inch PVC drain waste vent piping. I had um, several pipes that were already here out on our homestead so that's kind of the re reason I went this direction. So I just went and picked up a couple of little adapters and reducers and tees from the hardware store and total of 35 bucks. I'm pretty sure I've got everything I need to make this system. I'm gonna dry fit everything first to make sure it lines up and works and looks good and then I'll come back and glue it. The first flush diverter system. First flush diverter. It's kind of hard to say. If you don't know much about them, you might be thinking, what does that mean? Well, here is Sam's definition. And disclaimer, this is going to be Sam's definition. So I reserve the right to be wrong about anything I say. First flush. It takes the first bit of the water and flushes it down the tubes. You don't want that. The first amount of rain you get, you have all the pollen, dust, leaves, bugs, chemtrail, dust, I don't know, whatever you want to say, sitting on your roof. The first amount of water you get, you don't want to take that and funnel it into your rainwater collection system. That's junk. So you take that first water and flush it. You don't flush it down the toilet, but you flush it down in the yard and into the grass and out of your way. Diverter is the fact that whenever this larger pipe is full, the water will then start to divert over and that should be clean. The roof should be fairly rinsed and washed and that will divert over to your rain barrels. That's, that's the good stuff. As good as you can get without going crazy, but that's the good stuff we want to collect and use in our garden and elsewhere. There is Sam's definition of what is a first flush diverter. First rain, flush it, then divert the rest, keep it, save it, use it, and high five yourself and giggle as you water from your barrels. Here's a trick for how to make sure everything lines up as you glue it. Put you some dots on the pieces that you have yet to glue on all your joints. That way you'll know where to line them up at so you get the exact same angle 
on each piece. Now you can comfortably and safely take them apart and glue them knowing they'll be right. All the parts, pieces, materials, and fittings, and all the stuff you see here, with the exception of the uni seals, I got from our local mom and pop hardware store. They are simple, common plumbing fittings such as two inch PVC, some elbows, some T's, some three inch to two inch adapters, clean out plugs, all that kind of stuff. You should be able to find every single bit of this project, all the materials and pieces, with the exception of the uni seals, at your local hardware store. My goal with this was not to show you guys a commercial first flush diverter system and tell you go buy it. My goal was to show you how to take materials you have on hand or that are readily accessible, cheap, affordable, things you can buy a little bit here and there at a time, start to get your hoard amassed. Every good homesteader has a hoard. And then you can go about building your system and it won't be so detrimental to your back pocket, aka your wallet. That being said, I'm sure there's a lot of really cool commercial first flush diversion systems that are neat and fancy and look probably a lot prettier than this one, but I like to think of this as having a rugged, charming characteristic. Not too dissimilar as myself. Round, a little dirty and scuffed up, but you keep it around because it actually does some work and does work good. <laughs> I put a one inch PVC overflow out of the top of all five of these barrels. In theory, unless we just get a monsoon, two two inch pipes feeding should not exceed five one inch pipes draining. Hopefully. We'll see. You guys are gonna stay tuned. I, you know I will let you know if this works out or if it's a tragic failure. I'm not hiding behind no smoke and mirrors. There's no mirrors out here. There's no smoke. So if it works, I will tell you, I will show you, and we will all high five each other. And if it doesn't work, I'll tell you, I'll show you. We'll cry a little bit and then I'll fix it. It's the joy of YouTube. It's the joy of, you know, me being a down to earth dude showing you what happens and reality because otherwise it would be a huge disservice to you guys for me to never tell you this was a failure and you go do it at your place and then you realize it's a failure i don't want to do that to you guys you don't want me to do that to you so we won't we'll keep it real It is all done. And wouldn't you know it, now that the rainwater system is hooked up and ready to rock and roll, there's not any rain in our immediate forecast. Well, there you go. If you're having problems with rain at your garden or place, build a rainwater collection system. It's sure to drive it away. That's okay. I'm gonna get out the water hose and give this thing a trial run and test, let you guys see it in action and all that really, really awesome, cool 
amazing stuff. And then also make sure that it actually does work the way it's worked in my head for a while. Let's make sure it works here too. All right, that was a fail. These holes are way too big, but it's all right. We got duct tape here. We can fix these holes. Well guys, I don't know about you, but I am thrilled, excited, and actually looking forward to some rain. Come on, where's it at? I'm sure it'll be here soon enough, and when that day comes, you can guarantee I'll be out here all giggly looking and seeing how it works, watching the barrels fill up, and then playing in the water some more. If you have any questions or comments, anything that I didn't cover, went too fast on, or you just have something in general to say, leave me a comment down below. I love to get them, read them, and I try and reply to all of them as well. Otherwise, we'll see you guys next time. Appreciate you watching. If you haven't seen the rest of the build videos for this greenhouse, there's a link to the playlist down below. And as usual, there's a card at the very end of the screen on what video YouTube thinks you'll like to watch best from us next. Thanks for watching. We'll see you guys next time on The Homestead.